Thank you, Sheikha. Good afternoon. All right, still one. <laughs> My name is Sheikha, and I'll be doing something I'm working on. It's more personal. I'm working on the model. I call it the Bristol model, and it's built with the design of my passion in managing SMEs. I mean, I came here to study MBA to be able to impart my environment back home. And despite the fact that we have so many complex theories and everything, I try to make it simple for SMEs to run with this complex structure. So I call it the Bristol model. Maybe you are investing, maybe you are starting a business, maybe you are running your business and you want to make it more efficient. There are three key things I want you to look out for when you are doing your investments, running your business, business or investing as well. So it's mainly designed to help the SMEs to move from where they are to where they want to be. So the Bristol name is just because it's designed from Bristol. We are studying my MBA, so it makes me still feel connected to Bristol and to my passion as a person. I want to see SMEs grow to where they really want to be. Uh, we're looking at three things that I want to look at. These are the key drivers of my Bristol business model. The key drivers of the business model is one, the company profile, the business environment, <coughs> and the financials. These are three key things I want you to look at when you're investing, when you're starting up your business, or when you're running your business. I mean, you can ask why are these three key components very important? These are the drivers, these are what makes your returns. Without these three components working together, we can't just take one and ignore the others because they are together. It's like a society, it's like a system. And you can't just pick one and concentrate on your company and just leave the others. So in looking at the company profile, what should I want you to look at in the company profile as well? I have three things for you to also look at in the company profile. Just three things. I want you to be as much as basic for SMEs to understand that if you're running your business or you're starting your business, what are you looking at doing? It's very important for you to understand your business and what is the risk involved in that your business. Because the risk also determines your return. If you're not, if you're looking at higher returns, that means you should look at taking more risk. If you're looking at lower returns, it also affects your risk as well. That means your risk must be low. And the management team, who are going to be in charge of this business? Who are going to run it? Are they competent to do it? Do they know what it takes to run the business? These are things that you need to, it may, if you are trying to invest in the stock market, you need to read that the, the management profile of the company. And they, what's their past experience? Do they have what it takes to run this business? These are things that you need to consider. Then in terms of business strategy, how are they trying to do this? How are they trying to go towards the main objective of the business? What is their strategy? Are they trying to differentiate themselves from the public, from the old competitors? Or they are trying to work on cost strategy. There are so many things to consider, but the main key is you don't need to be blind to the business strategy of the company you're investing in. You need to consider it. You need to look into it. You need to evaluate it and see how the company provides and affect your business. The next thing, if I'm looking at business, I mean, this is an example of the risk and return trade-off because you can't go for high risk and expect low return. There's a return, there's a risk trade-off between the risk and the return. So, if you're looking at a higher risk, then the return too must be high. If you're looking at a lower risk, the return too must be low. You can't expect to have a higher return by taking lower risk. It has to be connected. I mean, why do you want to stay in your comfort zone and expect a higher return? It has to relate with your investment and your return as well. And back to business environment. Company does not just operate in a vacuum. You are not just on an island. You are relating with the society. And whatever happens in your environment affects your business. Is the environment doing well? What is the macroeconomic situation in the environment? These are things to consider. But I have three key things for you to also look at when you're looking at your business environment. I have the macroeconomics. How is the macroeconomics? How is like unemployment, for example? Do we have people available to do your job? If no, that means your wage cost will go high and your profitability will go down. Or the skill required, is it available in the market? These are factors that affect how your business goes on. Okay, inflation rate, for example. If the inflation rate is so high and you want to go on investment, that means the cost of your fund will be high as well. And then foreign currency, the exchange rate, and some other things. You need to be aware of your, of your environment. You can't just invest in isolation. You need to know how your environment, I call it, you need to know how your environment breathes and also live. It's a society, it's a system, and you need to be connected to your environment. The industry, for example, you need to consider the industry. What industry am I in? How 
is the industry competitive? The, the nature of the competition, like for example, in the food industry in UK, combined Tesco and Sainsbury, and how they compete. If you are going into that kind of business, you need to understand how they are competing. Are they competing on cost or on differentiation? Where position? Where do you want to position yourself? Because if you just move in without considering the effect of the industry, that means you will be choked up in the whole industry. Then we look at government. What is the impact of government? What is government regulations? You need to know what governments are discussing. What are the MPs discussing about your industry, your where you want to be? You can't just run your business and feel government is not important to your business. Whatever government is doing has an impact on whatever you are doing. For example, I have, during the austerity measures, I use a company, GSK. The government changed their healthcare reform because of the austerity, especially in Europe. And they make generic computers to have access to their rights. That means GSK and the likes lost some patent rights. And the effect of, I mean, the sales from 2009, 9,200, all the millions, went down to 7,320. That's one of those like 20.43% downfall in your revenue. That's the effect of how government regulations can affect your business. So you can't just run your business in isolation. You need to consider the environment. You need to consider the business, the government decision as it affects your company. Then the last thing I want you to also look at is the financials. This is the figures. People are always interested in the figures. They need to know how profitable the business will be. But in looking at the financials, I want you to look at three key things as well. The past performance of the business. How have they been performing? Their forecast. What are they looking into? What do they want to achieve? And also the stock performance. In terms of past performance, you may look at the profitability. Because you can't just start in the future without a relevance to the past. You have to connect with it. I have an example here to show you for how performance. For example, maybe the company in 2012. Their revenue was supposed to be 70,000 naira and 2,000 and they are now projecting 60,000 for 2014. Then you need to ask yourself questions. Why? Why is there a decline and sudden major increase in 2015? What is actually happening? Is it the environment that is changing this focus? Or is it something more internal? You need to connect their past to their future. You can't just pull away. It's all connected. Then what is responsible? You need to, I mean, for example, the expenses is a little bit flexible. So why is the expenses not moving in relation to the turnover? What is happening? These are information you take. But definitely, you can't just take the past performance alone or the forecast alone. You have to relate the two and start asking yourself that question. Why is there this change? Why is things not just moving in the way it should be? The environment will definitely affect their results. Their company profile will definitely affect their results. And the trend and people's perception in terms of stock market will affect their profitability. So all these are connected. The other thing is, what I'm saying to small scale businesses, if you have to invest or you have to run your business or you have to do anything, consider that three key things. The company profile, the business environment, the financials, they are all connected. Because where your treasure is, is also where your heart is. You can't just live in vacuum. Your business is wrong with you. And most people run business with their passion. And it's not just about being objective, about running your business, and if the business feel you feel it is OK. It's a part of you. And the moment your business is not succeeding, it affects your other being, people around you. And why make decisions without considering basic things? You can't just take the financials alone and run with it. You can't just take the company profile alone and run with it. You can't just consider the environment alone. You have to consider these three key things. These three key things, as you run your business, you need to open your mind to the company profile. You need to open your mind to the business environment. You need to open your mind to the financials of the company. And at the end of the day, you will be happy. You can relax. I know that all things, I mean, you are conscious of your environment. You are not just living alone. You are in your environment. You live in your environment. You impact your environment. And that is the whole essence of the investing. And I say, I mean, the model, there is no article for it yet. I'm working on it. I will definitely <laughs> write some articles to bring in some other theory. Because in the business environment, you can have the Potter's Five analysis, the Pestle analysis, and every other thing. They are all included in this very simple model. And they are all designed to show small scale businesses that yet we don't have the resources to engage professionals to come and do Pestle analysis. You may not be able to maybe call Potter's, for example, to come and explain some things to you. But you can run with these three key things and do a very good business. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, so maybe you want to grab a seat and come in front of us. What do you believe passionately in the Bristol model? Yes. Uh, that that that's, doesn't require an answer. It comes across. <laughs> um, based upon what other people have said about business models, how does yours stack up against what other people have said? Yeah, I mean, other people from the church will be able to read. They, I mean, I try to look at it from the same platform. I try to look at it from SMEs. They are technical abilities. They are knowledge base. Can they really interpret all this? <coughs> can you, for example, if you have to do pestle analysis, can you really do it as an SME? It is a bit very complex, but there is a part where we, I as an individual, needs to make, I mean, maybe in business, for example, everybody is not multinationals. We have so many small scale businesses. Yeah. They need to know how to do this simple analysis and be able to make informed decisions to grow their business. So what I'm looking at is, okay, fine. I'm opportune to study an MBA, but everybody will never have that opportunity. But people will definitely need to run their business effectively. How can I make that change? How can I make sure that it is simple for them to understand? If you have to do Potter's five analysis, do you need to consider all the five forces? Maybe it's just the social, maybe if you are, maybe it's just the bargaining power of the supply that you need to consider. How do you see it? It's about what can you see and be aware of your environment. Your environment matters to your business. So even though you are busy, most small businesses, they are very busy trying to make their business work. Don't just dive into your business. Be conscious of other factors. And don't look at it from that complex view. Look at it from that simple view. And narrow your mind to that three key things that can change how you so you're selling the Bristol model again. <laughs> <laughs> My question though is how does this stack up against what other people have said? SMEs. I mean, SMEs, what other people said about SMEs? Is from a business model. From a business model. I mean, maybe they lack the competence to do some things, they don't have the resources enough to invest and bring in professionals to do what they need to do. And also, sometimes they fail to take risk. I mean, because the level of your risk also determines how you move as well. Mm -hmm. Even though they may dream of being big, but they stay being small because they are not ready to take that risk. And SMEs can only, I mean, SMEs, maybe in UK, contribute like 70% some, some, of the total employment index and everything. That means it's huge. But my, my major aim is why are they not growing as expected? Why are they not taking that leap of faith to move from where they are to where we want them to be? Mm -hmm. And people perception is okay, SME, because of their family orientation, they don't want to really move beyond, I mean, that's trust you just want everything around you but sometimes you need to see beyond you and see what effects you can do by thinking outside the box for a minute and by sitting back and see your business not just locking yourself into it because the more you lock yourself into it the less you see so if you can move out and see then you can relate more to what is happening around I, um, I think yeah, what you presented is a really compelling, sort of very general model of business. Have you applied it to any specific organisation or specific sector so you can show us kind of the, the impact that's resulted from okay, using the I mean, model? Um, from my experience back home, I mean, this is, I mean, that's why the passion comes from. Mm -hmm. I started working for a big company and I resigned like five years ago to start managing the service. And one thing I discovered is, fine, all these models and everything is there. Some of them are not even aware of it. They don't even know how to use it. Even though coming to Bristol made me to see, okay, I can structure this thing into a nice model to sell it there. But in terms of business environment, for example, in my country, I run with SMEs to let them see that it's not just about your business. What is the local government decisions about what you are doing? You need to be aware of it. Don't just soak yourself. So I have like five SMEs. I mean, some of them is even on voluntary services that you just do to them because it doesn't really take so much to just advise an SM. They can't can pay for the value of what you are giving them. But it's also about, okay, how much can you give back to them and let them also move and see. It's about giving them the opportunity <coughs> to see beyond 
there are limitations because most SMA skills they are limited. And when you talk to them on a personal load, they have loads of complaints. <coughs> they can't really do all these things. And from my experience, using this model now is much more because I'm refining it to take it back home to work more on it. Yeah. But more on financial because I'm a chartered accountant and I work on the financials and I say people don't really like finances, for example. When you mention move into finance, people disconnect. And the finance is very important to your business. You can't run away from it. You need to embrace finance. You need to, it's supposed to be like a marriage between you and the business. You can't just stay away from the figures. But how can we make that figures so simple so that they can also understand and appreciate these figures? That's the challenge of some SMEs. They love to have good skills. They love to run. But you can't just be running. You need to connect all the other aspects of your businesses to whatever you want to make. So in terms of financials, people just want to aspire and just move. Your past must connect to wherever you are going to. You can't just want to move. Yeah, I, think, I think I can see. I think what, what I'm trying to say is to say, say I'm running a small company. I can see from your model, yeah, I can see how all these things are important to me. And I need to understand them. But I think, but I'm not sure I know how to answer all those questions. So I think what I need from you in order to help me use this model is under each of these sections a kind of checklist of what, what are the specific questions I need to ask in my, in my particular business sector that is going to help me Make answer decisions. your questions and to, do, and to do that analysis because at the moment it's just a bit too okay, so if I pick it from the company profile for example, yeah. if you're a small business and I have the management and the risk nature. The question you need to ask yourself is, what is the risk involved in running your business? Mm -hmm. So, based on some, spe some specific examples from your investments in Nigeria, right there, of how they respond to that question. Okay. For example, like I have an SME that is trying to run an oil business. When you sell diesel, mm -hmm. oil business, you want to sell diesel. You know, the price of diesel, the profit margin on diesel is not that much if you are not producing it. And you want to sell diesel because if you you can easily sell because there is, the power situation in Nigeria is not that high, and you can easily sell to people there is great market in it. <coughs> but the risk involved in it is if you make a mistake, the cost of the mistake is very high because of the cost of your investment in it. So, if you are to run a diesel business, for example, in Nigeria, you need to consider the fact that I can lose everything in a second, and I can make so much also in a second. And if you're not aware of that risk, you can't just be free as the same person that is selling maybe a food here. Yeah. So, so you need to, be able to help people to quantify that risk, risk. Not, not just understand it as a emotional yeah. thing. Yes. Can I ask, are you seeing any sort of change in the way is the aim that you would sell this model to uh, an SME and then you would go in and help them to implement this model? So um, you would be the one guiding them through this model to help them to do all those things to come out at the end with the, the, the right approach for their business. Is that, is that what you're selling? You're selling you helping them to put this model in place? Yeah, uh, yeah, because definitely at the initial stage, it has to be me selling it because that's my aim as well. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to build my own consultancy firm. And I don't want to do something general. I need to look for something unique to sell to my people. And so, I mean, it's starting from me selling it to them and implementing it. But at the same time, training people to see this because I can't impact all. And I want something so simple that I can easily sit down in a, a, a fresh graduate and tell him these basic things. I mean, from this simple model, we can go very deep. But we need to start from somewhere, somewhere small, where people can easily relate with you and take it up. As they move on in the ladder, in their knowledge base, then they see, they see more of Because even businesses that are starting small, they are not starting with all the complexity of the business. They are starting small. So they need to relate with all these small, small minds. Definitely it will start from me. But learning, training people, I need to look for a model that I can easily train people and they can easily embrace. Even if you've not heard about portals and all this complexity, resource-based view, model. But you can relate with it in a simpler form. And by the time I start showing them, oh, there is competitive advantage in this model, they can easily relate with it. But not starting with, for example, resource-based view, where you need to build your internal capacity and everything. It seems too large, but I need something that I can easily relate with and build it gradually and sell it to them. The knowledge base in my country is not that 
big as a UK where people are that knowledgeable and they have access to all this information. So I'm looking at, okay, well, how can I fill the gap? I'm still giving them the same thing, but in a new form where they can relate to it. How can I make it very simple and they can run with it? Because I don't want to push it to them and they run away. I need to pull them in. I need them to feel comfortable and embrace Potter's ideas and embrace all these other theories unknowingly. They're already doing it unknowingly. By the time they start seeing what they are doing in written form and listen to Potter's interview, for example, they can relate with it. It's all about how can they get the appreciation for whatever they are doing. Not just cramming the theories, but relating and using it to make a positive change. I mean, it's an interesting question that Paul asked that because I, I must admit at the beginning I, I thought the presentation was around uh, talking to us as investors that we would be looking to some attract investment into SMEs, presumably for extra capital, for growth, etc. Um, but now what became clear is what you're selling, if you like, uh, is a consulting model to go and, and actually help SMEs develop their business. So you like a sort of business, not so much of a business angel, but a business consultant. Is that, is that how you're, you're not, are you doing it so that you can help the organization become investable, so that you can go and actually attract the rest of the looking at the business plans in this way, or are you just, just there just to help them? Okay, like as I started, I started with, are you investing? Because the same model, I can relate it with you if you are just investing. I can relate it with you if you are just starting your business. I can relate it with you if you are running your business. So you've got so so you've got potentially three different types of customer there. Yeah, because okay. I mean. So who who are you going to be? I mean, are you going to try and do all three at the same time? Are you going to? I mean, for an SME, they face they are faced with these three decisions at every point in time. They are faced with what do they do with their SS fund? Do they need to invest with it, or just just what are they going to do with it? They are faced with how to run their business, and they are faced with can I start up a new venture? These are three investment decisions that. On the mind of an average enterprise, an SME, it's they can't really separate the three because they have fund and they, are, they need to make a decision, maybe to continue to run their business effectively or to invest in something or to start up a new venture. So, okay. it's, so, so it's, it's clearly geared towards the owners, really. Yeah. Yes. So what, what? I mean, I was asking for some detail as well because we saw the, the hybrid model. I mean, you can see that as an accountant, there's obviously a lot of potentially a lot of detail. Beneath the surface here. One of the things you mentioned was business strategy uh, under the company profile. I was wondering whether you could give us sort of um, you know, a quick point to that. What would you say would be some of the key things I need to look for in business strategy you know, that jump out to me? Okay, business strategy, I mean, as I, I mentioned, differentiation or cost reduction as a strategy if you are going into an industry, for example, if I'm to start a business in the food sector in the UK, for example, I want to sell groceries, I need to know where do I want to place myself. They are already heavy players on the cost reduction strategy. Can I compete with those people? I won't just open a store and nobody will come and get my goods. Or do I want to differentiate what I'm selling? The moment I feel to consider that before starting, I just feel a grocery business is selling, people are walking into shops, and I just feel that the whole thing I need to consider is just to get a shop and buy the goods and display it. I won't make any problem because I need to understand what strategy, where do I want to run? Because I can't run everywhere. I need to focus where I'm to run. So for business strategy, if you are running, I say, okay, where, do you want to differentiate your product? You can't sell all the products. What kind of product do you want to sell? <coughs> so start narrowing down what you want to do so that you can get something out of the business, not just trying to do everything. So business strategy is also very wide, but if I'm talking to an SME, I need to get your passion to whatever you want to do. Then can you sustain this? If you can't, if you can't sustain this, then it will wear you down. Because everything you do as an SME is connected to your passion and your well-being and what you can do. So I need to know. I mean, it's more of consulting and understanding the SMEs and relating it with you. Don't just do things just because you are emotionally attached to it. You need to see the other part of it. Because so most SMEs do they fail? They are faced with this challenge of they are passionate about this idea and they just want to run it. But at some point, you need to put a check to the passion where you let them see. Okay, can you sustain this? You can't. You gave us the example of, of diesel. Was that a specific client of yours, or was that a general? No, no, it's a specific client of mine. I mean, it's 
uh, when because before the client, before I got that client, the client feels this business was very profitable and she got money from other people and feel wow, uh, I'm making she started small, she feel making good money. And she got money from people and push everything inside the investment. And without realizing that even though the risk is high, there is that potential of losing everything. I mean, it, it was really a really tragic incident because she lost almost everything. How did she lose them? She invested, I mean, the more, because the, the return is very attractive. And she didn't consider the risk nature of the investment that you can also lose everything. She started placing more orders. She started moving beyond buying in bits to, because you can as well buy in bulk. And if you are buying from the sea, you don't know what happens when you, maybe you don't even know maybe you get your products. I mean, you don't know. So she ended up with too much stock. I mean, she placed order on sea, over sea, and the order never arrived. Just because she wants to increase her margin. Because she feels she has been able to get info, income from people and she can buy at a higher stage. And that's a disconnect between the risks of the business and the expected return. Because if she, if she, if she because after coming to me, I said, fine. You can have all the money. Money is not just about because you have the money doesn't mean you should just push it inside an investment. You understand? You, can, can, you have the structure in place to all this risk. You don't have it. You are just one small because buying fine because you have so the assets. What would you advise them? If you could have, you know, obviously that, that was a sad story then. Yeah. If you could have kind of it earlier, what would your advice have been to them? Definitely, I would advise her to go down upstream because you need to build gradually to get to where those big players are also playing. Because you have the money doesn't mean you are there already. Do you have any structure to sustain this? How do you confirm that those guys are actually bringing your product? The system and the structure that you need to build up in going for higher risk is separate from the same system and structure you need to have. So specifically then, what would you advise us to do? Okay, what I would advise us to do is find you have a track record, that's your past performance when I go to finance it. Because she has she fails, I have past record, I have finances and I have profitable trend so and I've been so able to so get she has lots of perhaps misplaced confidence. Then. Yeah, I mean if, that, if I'm to connect it to this model in terms of financials now, past performance okay, but you're now projecting so high. And that's that's a disconnect. You, you can't project so high. Your growth has to be in phases. You need to move in phases. And that, if I go back to the example of the model, you can't be making 60,000 and I think you can make 500,000 the next month just because you feel you can raise the capital to go to 500. It has to be, other structures need to be in place before you go that high. Definitely, if you have a <coughs> target in mind, because you need, you need to go through the process. You can't just wake up and feel money is the answer to all things. Even though money is good, it doesn't answer all the questions. Structures, you need to settle down and take the risks in phases. Take the risks in phases and move towards your end goal. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, folks? Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Um, if you'd like to uh, adjourn outside.